Greetings, dear brothers and sisters. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once again to Him and Him alone be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today is the 27th day, right David? Yes. Today is the 27th day of the 7th month of the year 20, 2017. And dear brothers and sisters, today once again we are here. I'm here with our four-year-old son David. He has a cover sheet for us. We are once again, dear brothers and sisters, going to have a fellowship, read some scriptures together, and let, invite the presence of Yeshua HaMashiach, the King Himself, in our lives. Because in His presence, only there are pleasures forevermore. Because in His presence, only there will be deliverance from whatever bondage, whatever chain, whatever shackle. Today the enemy is trying to chain you with, dear brothers and sisters. We welcome you today to please join us. Please have a fellowship with us. We welcome you today to read the scriptures together. Let invite the Holy Spirit in your life and let the Holy Spirit minister your hearts. And ask the Lord to reveal what the Lord has for you for the rest of the days of our lives, which is extremely, extremely short because Jesus Christ of Nazareth is coming and he's coming any moment now. Literally, dear brothers and sisters, that's the time we are living in. That's the time we are living in. And that, with that said, dear brothers and sisters, the enemy knows his time is short. The enemy is attacking each one of us with varying magnitudes, with his darts, fiery darts of doubt, denial, deceit, and lies. Dear brothers and sisters, we don't have to. You don't have to stay there. Whatever your day has been, your week has been, your month has been, whatever valley, whatever suffering, whatever sickness, the enemy is trying to put you in. We don't have to. You don't have to stay there because the Bible promises us in 1 John 4, 4 that greater, greater is he who is in us. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Dear brothers and sisters, today, let's once again have a fellowship together. Let's glorify the King and let's rejoice in Him. Let's get filled with His Holy Spirit and once again, Exalt his name to the high. So let's start with a word of prayer. Shall we, David? Yeah. Right. Heavenly Father, as we gather together today in your holy name, we stand on your word, Lord of Matthew 18, 20. You said that where two or three gather in my name, I will be there in the midst of them. Lord, we invite your presence in this place, in our hearts, in our mind, in our soul, as we are about to read the scriptures. At this time, please do pour out your spirit on each one of us, on our dear brothers and sisters viewing us and worshiping with us right this moment. And please, Lord, give each one of us the love of commitment that Paul had towards his spiritual family. And please do help. Each one of us to keep ourselves into perspective. Father, please give us the depth of resource, humility, that we may exhibit and exalt our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. May our prayers be a petition for humility rather than a substitute for it. Help us today, Lord, to take every thought captive and acknowledge our ownership of each negative thoughts. And please, Father, please do draw us to repentance. So that we can forgive others where we feel we have been wronged. Heavenly Father, please give us a thirst for your word. An unending hunger for you and your word. And please do keep us free from the bondage of legalism or the false comfort of rules. Also, Father, please do equip us in the end of the end of the end moments. With the full armor for the warfare we are engaged in in these last moments. And please, Father, do help us to see clearly. Just where you want us to be. And help us, Father, to relish the comfort and security that place assures us. Heavenly Father, today help us once again to measure everything, especially our credentials by the cross and not our flesh. May our own resume reflect gold, silver and precious stones and not the quest of wood, hay and stubble. Help us, Father, once again to focus with a singleness of devotion to our Lord that we may not be beguiled or blinded by the wiles of the enemy or the glitter of this temporal world. Heavenly Father, please do keep us diligent toward false teachers. 
and treacherous doctrines. Yet let us never abandon our first love. For we do love you, Father. And today, once again, help us to see you ever more clearly and thus love you even more, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, today as we read the scriptures together and worship you, Heavenly Father, with our fellow brethren, with our dear brothers and sisters, please do open our hearts and lives to your word and your words to our hearts and lives. And please do help us to worship you in truth and in spirit. May the meditations of our hearts and the words of our mouth be acceptable in your sight at this time. All this we pray in the holy mighty name of our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lion from the tribe of Judah and the Root of David, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen. and amen and amen. All right, so dear brothers and sisters, today once again the Lord has been leading us to read Psalm 40 and before we do that dear brothers and sisters sometimes we all find it very hard we all feel like giving thanks to the Lord in all circumstances especially in our valleys is extremely difficult and that's let's be honest dear brothers and sisters we all do go through that we all do feel that but as a matter of fact Paul tells us that it is the will of God for each one of us that to give thanks in every single circumstance. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 16 through 18 says rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Dear brothers and sisters rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. That's the will of God. That's the will of God. But dear brothers and sisters the truth is. It is oftentimes hard to thank the Lord in our valleys, in our deepest valleys, when we are hitting the rock bottom. But when we choose to thank God in the midst of our difficulties, something happens. It defeats the forces of the darkness in the spiritual realm. When we continually thank the Lord under every circumstances, dear brothers and sisters, even in our deepest valleys, the enemy is weakened and loses the battle against us. The enemy is stopped in his tracks when we come to God with a thankful heart. The Bible actually says in Romans, Paul says in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, And we know that, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Dear brothers and sisters, the most important thing to note in the scripture is, and we know that it's not we think, we hope, perhaps. No, we know that all our valleys, all our sicknesses, all our sufferings, all our troubles, whatever the enemy is putting us, God is, it is all God filtered and God is working it for a greater glory which we have no understanding in our dimension. But we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Dear brothers and sisters, today let us learn to be thankful for every situation in our lives. We need to learn to be thankful to Yeshua HaMashiach, our Redeemer, our Savior in the midst of our trials, dear brothers and sisters. And we, when we visualize ourselves from the standpoint of eternity, that makes it much easier, dear brothers and sisters. That makes it much easier for each one of us to be thankful under any circumstances, whatever, whatever the trial be, whatever our suffering be, whatever our temptation be. It makes it easier when we have an aerial view of our life from the point of eternity. Romans chapter 8 verses 16 through 18 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Dear brothers and sisters, the sufferings of the present is nothing, not even worthy to mention. With the day our beloved, our Savior, our Messiah, Yeshua, His Hamashiach is bringing for each one of us. 
And dear brothers and sisters, King David realized that very well. That his present sufferings were not even worth comparing to the glory which Yeshua HaMashiach had in store for him. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, that is the truth. Our obedience, our thankfulness, our diligence, our perseverance. It's all going to be worth it. It's all going to be well worth it, dear brothers and sisters. And that's the backdrop of, the, of this psalm. In Psalm 40, which we are going to read now. We welcome you. We encourage you, dear brothers and sisters. We'll be using our New King James Version. We encourage you. Please do. If you follow along or you can use, please do use your own Bible. Let us just read the scriptures together and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you through as we read Psalm 40 together. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead, lead you what the Lord has for you today. In Psalm 40, we see King David's heart of thankfulness in the midst of deepest valley when he's hitting the rock bottom. That's where we see King David's heart of thankfulness. This is basically a psalm of declarative praise combined with the lament which we see. This psalm is a remarkable example of how troubles and difficulties force King David to depend continually on the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, that's how we are designed to be. Whatever trouble, whatever valley, whatever suffering, if we go through Psalm 1, 103, Psalm 103, God, the creator of heaven and earth, has yearnings. Can you believe it? God has one question every single day. He will put circumstances, situations in our lives and he will ask one question. My child, do you trust me today that I will see you through? Not through your power or might, but through my Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, that's what God says every single day. Every single day, God finds a way to see whether we trust in Him, in His resources, on our, our strength, on our intellect. King David realized that. And he continually, every single time, through his troubles and difficulties, he depended every single time on the Lord. This Psalm, Psalm 40, is a, it has 17 verses. And the structure of the psalm is like this. It's verses, when we see the first three verses, one through three, it tells us a report of deliverance. The next two verses, verses four and five, it is an instruction to the people to commit their lives to Yeshua HaMashiach. Verses six through eight, we see a confession about worship. Verses nine and ten, we see a report to God of the fulfillment of the vow of praise. Verses eleven and twelve, is a renewed lament. Verses 13 and 15, King David talks about a set of petitions for deliverance. And the final two verses, 16 and 17, it talks about continuing praise in the midst of trouble. So let's jump into Psalm 40 and you can please follow along, read or for read your own, have your own Bible and let the Holy Spirit guide you. Psalm 40. I waited patiently, a psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Dear brothers and sisters, here the Hebrew translated, I waited patiently, literally means waiting, I waited. The emphasis of this phrase is not really on patience, but on the fact that King David waited solely and solely on the Lord. The word to wait expresses a confident trust which is not shaky, an unshakable, unmovable faith in the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust. Dear brothers and sisters, I repeat. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done 
and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Dear brothers and sisters, the Lord not only gives us ears to hear his word, but also grants us understanding so that we can truly obey him through his word. Truly, we can know him. Sacrifice and offering continue to verse 6. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. And your law is within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O Lord, you yourself know. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. Have you, dear brothers and sisters, declared his faithfulness? Because he and he alone is the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have surround me, surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I am not able to look up. There are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who seek to destroy my life. Let them be driven backward and brought to dishonor who wish me evil. Let them be confounded because of their shame, who say to me, aha, aha. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation. Say continually, the Lord be magnified. The Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help. My deliverer, do not delay, O oh my God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Your brothers and sisters, what a staggering promise. What a staggering promise the Lord has that Lord, his eyes are set upon us. The Bible says in Psalms 34, 19, dear brothers and sisters, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Dear brothers and sisters, today as David sings for us, I have decided to follow Jesus as we see the cover sheet up there. The scripture, the Luke 9.23 we see there, tells us if anyone desires to come after me, that's Jesus telling, talking, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Dear brothers and sisters, whatever the cross today, whatever is your cross, whatever your troubles, your burdens, your sufferings are, let's pick it up, let's carry it and let's sing together and let's follow Jesus. Let's come to his presence. Let him minister your heart with his Holy Spirit and let the Spirit of God pour out and cry out that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the King of Kings. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Lord of Lords and the name above every single name, my Redeemer, my Savior, my God, Yeshua HaMashiach. So let's, you can get started, David. So let's join us, dear brothers and sisters, as David sings for us today. Praise 
Once again, dear brothers and sisters, wherever you are today, whatever in your walk, wherever you are, if somebody listening to us now, if you don't know him, if you have not getting connected with him, if anything is stopping you to crucify your flesh, come to him today. He will help you, dear brothers and sisters. The Bible says he is for us. Romans 8, 31 says that God is for us. Then who can be against us? Your brothers and sisters, the one who came from heaven to earth, one who became the word incarnate. He's not here to condemn us. Those are lies from the pit of hell. That's what the enemy wants us to believe, dear brothers and sisters. Whatever the magnitude of your sin is, whatever the depth of your Valley is today. He is for you right this moment. He is calling you. Come to me. Come to me. Those who are tired and weary. Come to me. I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says. Your brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, the thief only comes to steal, kill and destroy. And every single day, that's the only motive of the thief to steal, kill and destroy us. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth came to give us life and life in abundance. So we don't have to stay there today. You don't have to stay where the enemy is trying to put you today. Come to him today and let's together pledge on once again. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 16 through 18. Therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory why we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal hallelujah 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 we thank you once again, dear brothers and sisters. If you haven't gotten a chance to worship with us and feel the presence of the King himself, once again, please do go back, worship with us and ask the Lord to minister your heart with his Holy Spirit, no matter whatever you are in, in his presence, Psalm 16, 11 says, in his presence only there is fullness of joy. So come to him today. He's waiting for you with arms wide open. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again, and let's end with a word of prayer. Shall we, David? Yes. Lord Jesus, once again, you bring us off in your presence, Lord, and I pray for the people who are watching us, Lord. Help them, Lord, and bless them, Lord. Help them to be in you, Lord, and give them strength, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, and God bless you all.